Hi guys and welcome back to another episode with Fly Time with me, Telles Katsugeos and it's now episode 16 and for you guys that have been following this series for the, the winter and previous winter I do apologize for the big delay uh, in between episode 15 and this one uh, it's been a tough winter, a lot of bullshit and uh, I mean got COVID for a second time as well but now we're back on track and all the episodes will soon be aired. Uh, tonight or we're gonna do uh, a couple of variations of banana flies. One that I called Orkla Gold, which has obviously been a fly that I've been using a lot in Orkla, in Norway. It suits those kind of rivers uh, very very nice with this olive, uh, dirty, yellowish color. Uh, and then I'm gonna do an olive banana, a little bit more classic uh, Typical Swedish variation of it uh, for the, from the north. A uh, little bit different ways of tying. It's going to be a cone and a US tube, and uh, well, both of them works very nice. Personally, I uh, use these kind of colors a lot early in the season, fishing for uh, fresh fish. A little bit extra gold flash, and it seems to attract those uh, early season fish, the, the chromers. Otherwise, it's a beautiful fly for sunny and bright conditions and uh, for those clear waters. But it's also very nice when you want the fly to be a little bit more visible. For example, in Murrum or those uh, Swedish rivers that has very peaty, uh, brownish water, because then it, it really you will you will it looks like a single light when it comes through the pool. But in those conditions, we want the fly to show. So, both in the scenario where we want to hide the fly and want to show the fly, the banana colors are very, very good. Uh, and I hope you enjoy these uh, versions of it. Okay, we're going to start with the conehead one. That means that we're going to use uh, first 1.8 millimeters black plastic tube and then 3 millimeters. And I'm sliding over. Make sure that this is not. Uh, it needs a certain amount of space underneath, but you also want to be able to fit the hook. Uh, so place it somewhere in here, and as you can see, it's cut diagonally. It's to make the attachment a little bit easier. So I'm attaching the thread here. As you can see, it, it gets pinched together, and if you want to make sure that it's stronger. You can drop a little bit of glue there. Uh, we're going to use body braid first in color gold. Of course, flat braid or any other gold colored body will do. Make sure that this is stuck to the needle. Sometimes it slides a little bit. Then wrap it down. And as you can see, I'm putting it close to each other. This body is going to be pretty simple. And I'm going to put the dubbing, which is the next step, uh, close here. I don't want to tie too much out on the thin tube. You want to make the fly end as close to this as possible for making the fly stronger. So we're going to use blended eye stub, olive copper. Of course you can use gold as well, but when I used to tie this fly, I used to call Orkla Gold. This was the dubbing I had. But we are also adding a little bit of olive features later on, so I think it fits pretty good. Like so. Pretty simple body, it doesn't need to be much more difficult than this. The first wing is banana. Well, the whole this fly will just have one color. Same as the other one. And I'm cutting off here. First wing should be the shortest, but I'm looking here now for where that natural taper is. And then I'm sliding it between my fingers like this. Pulling my finger back, holding my thumb. This will, as you can see, create a very nice taper. This one I will tie straight on, because this is pretty thick. Uh, if I'm folding this wing, it, it gets a little bit tricky to get keep the volume down. But of course, tying it forward and then reversing it will make it stronger. But what I'm going to do here now is I'm put a little bit of glue there. Take your razor blade and cut. 
maybe use a sharper one that I have. This one has been used for a while now. That's just a regular like carpet paint uh, paint shop kind of razor blade. Nothing fancy, but it works. And then I'm taking Tinsel Flash Gold. It's very similar to Flashaboo or any other of those kind of flashes. Just one strand, put it there. One wrap and then turn it over. This is very important when you're having synthetic materials in the wing. Is that those strands of flash is not equally long. Because that will make the fly... Uh, or those will get stuck together in the... In the in the water. So if they're different lengths, they they tend to move a little bit better. Be careful not to cut the thread. For both of these flies we're going to tie, we're going to use rooster saddle. Of course, you can also use soft tackle patches. We're going to use different shades of banana and olive. And the first hackle I'm using here is a banana. I'm taking away what I do not want. Uh, before you're attaching the feather, make sure to see which side is what. As you can see, you have a convex and a concave. The convex is always up, so to speak. This is the convex is always this side. Concave is that side. When you're attaching this, the convex side should be facing you, meaning the feather should be the this part the stem should be facing from you not towards you why this is important is because when we are hackling here we want that to be a nice color as you can see I cut the little triangle there uh, when I'm hackling if I'm attaching it on the wrong side the, the hackle will be facing forward instead of folding backwards nicely you can see that I started attaching it on that big hump but I'm Pinching it down just beneath, just in the very thinner edge there. Take your scissor, not your sharp cutting part, but this inside here. Put that towards the hackle stem and then slowly drag backwards. Now we have duplicated the hackle. It's going to be easier to hackle and get all the fibers in the right direction. Remember to do that only on that side that's going to hit the hook shank or the tube first which is this side because i'm wrapping this from me not towards me I'm doing now is just carefully folding back coming down here and every time i come down here I fold pinch and release that grip and i want to take a reverse grip every time if i just keep hackling without doing this this hackle stem will get as you can see it will get twinned and all that work we did in the beginning would be for nothing a couple of wraps to cover that and then just attaching it just 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 beneath as tight as possible and i'm using my left hand here now to attach it a little bit and then a few more turns and then cut that off i'm taking my uh, brush here still believe it is a colgate there is of course fancier tools that it's a little bit better than this, but it does the job. Okay, the second wing, same color. The good thing when we're tying uh, a fly with just one color is that we can do a technique, which I'm going to show you, which is short, longer, shorter, to get that drop, uh, teardrop shape of the, the fly. So, for example, in this case, I'm, I have longer hair, but I'm going to use a little bit shorter hair just to show you that you can still make a fly pretty long even though you just have one length of hair if you're tying it with one single color of course taking off a little bit of excess hair here I don't want that wing to be too bulky like so there's that natural taper I don't need to do very much with this wing here this one I'm gonna tie straight on the, the benefit of doing this is that if you are limited in your length of hair if you're tying it forward and then reversing it you will lose a little bit length so what i did here now is just putting it straight on this now will in my opinion need a little bit of glue just in case uh, i will do that as soon as i've used my razor blade 
cut that close it's a little bit sharper on that part apparently like this glue any super fast glue will work it's the drip I normally use the Loctite found in more or less any convenience store or supermarket or whatever works good uh, the next flash is angel hair salt water olive gold and I will actually gonna choose a golded one here I want this fly to be pretty gold because we're gonna have an olive hackle here coming up you can of course add a little bit more color to the flash if you want to this one will land we cut there and around there and shorten that one a little bit something like that there we go okay second hackle is the olive let's see where i put that one under the hair here i'm going to show you again convex very uh, very clear on this feather and concave take away that lint i personally do not want that the benefit of using a rooster when you're tying double colors of hackle is that it doesn't build too much if you're using a soft hackle or a hand saddle in this case the it's unfortunately a little bit easy to get a little bit too much uh, volume but everyone has their personal preferences as you can see i'm using an olive thread or light any light thread that uh, hides in this uh, light colors that we're using once again put that towards the stem and carefully do that there we go all right come down pull back pinch release and reverse your grip two three pull back pinch and those last two or one and a half ish turns will be just beneath that one reverse your grip there we go okay the last wing now will be the thinnest one a lot of times i get the question uh, if you have a small cone head or something or if you want to create a very small head on your fly make sure that the last wing is the thinnest now you can see i've built pretty good volume here already i don't need much much more volume so what i'm going to do is making this one very thin in comparison to the others and i'm going to tie this one reversed to show you that technique i think we'll go somewhere here take off a little bit of access remember this one is going to be pretty thin so measure in you need to do that as well you don't want it to be exactly the same length you can get pretty bulky so either shorter or try to max it out but i'm going to put it somewhere around here so cut that a little bit of access off and then hold it like this putting it there pinch it first two wraps or first one at least is pretty soft then i'm adding a little bit more pressure if if i start with a lot of pressure this will just move away now you can see when i fold it it also gets shorter so this is the 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 reason why sometimes putting it just straight on is the best choice but now as you can see it's very nice and clean i don't have to cut anything that's the very big benefit of it and also of course you will get a fly where the the materials really stick onto the the tube it won't not you will not be able to pull that wing out okay that's it that's the first one glue just a couple of drips one two three four and while that is wet i cut it off and pull this out because when I put the cone head on, I want to have it in my hand. It's a little, in my opinion, a little bit easier. And that's the reason why this is also cut diagonally. It's easier to put that on. Glue, just a tiny drop, Oop. somewhere like that. And if you see that you have tiny gaps here, here's a trick. Squeeze it in your scissor there and then pull. I normally do this with my teeth 
but I can't really show you that since I'm behind the camera. <laughs> All right. This is the Orkla Gold, very much banana-ish, as you can see, but a little bit more olive and brownish tone to it. Then I'm cutting off here, leaving a few millimeters, like one, two max. Take your, you can put it back on a needle and heat if you want, or just keep it like this. And one, two, three. There you go. All right. Then we will continue with the second one very very soon as you can see if sometimes when you're sitting like this and you can see ah, it is a little bit too much here in my opinion you can always carefully pinch off a little bit never never with tapered wings and stuff or tails never cut natural materials that will get way too straight and you will lose taper so if you feel that you have a little bit more too much volume somewhere you can always pinch it off as you can see you got a much nicer shape now All right next next slide okay <clears throat> now we're gonna do the us2 version which is also a different tone olive banana what what i've done here is uh, burn a little edge here drop of glue and then just slide that us tube or metal tube of choosing straight on pretty simple and we're just gonna tie in front of the metal so I'm just attaching in front of it still using that olive thread since this is going to be our head as well and for this fly I'm going to use uh, a different dubbing I'm going to use uh, signature olive gold signature salmon dumb this is a little bit different in texture a little bit more long fibers a little bit more flashy I normally actually cut this because I don't want those strands to be too long and then I just roll them around in my finger put that straight on like this now you can see this starts to spin around when that stops to spin like now then you know for a fact that it's stuck then you can just fold that over and attach it if it gets a little bit too bulky you can always just go in with your scissor and drag cut off something here like so and then make sure it's pretty clean the first, uh, uh, first uh, color or the first wing is olive banana and the first wing I'm trying to choose a little bit stiffer hair, hair fibers. I don't, I don't want it to be too soft because this acts as supportive wing. So the benefit of using different structures of hair, you can see my in my tips and tricks episode what some hair or some people might find as bad you will find as perfect depending on what you want to do stiffer hair will act as a support stiffer hair i normally just tie straight on like bucktail polar bear in this case a little bit stiff fox hair but first i'm going to taper that a little bit by sliding that finger backwards now you can see the tapering going on here then just tie that straight on like this now you can see if i'm putting too much pressure in the first I just push the materials away so a couple of loose turns before I tighten it there we go another thing that's good with this technique is you can adjust the length by pulling the hair before you tighten it but you will also need to clean by using a razor or a very very fine scissor so every everything you do always has a pro and a con I'm going to use that uh, angel hair again, olive gold, and I'm going to try and find uh, a strand that is a little bit more pearly. That is just because I like it like that, this one. You can of course use gold or olive or both. I tend to be pretty sparse with the flash, like so. Make sure that it it's different lengths on them cut this one here this one can be a little bit longer than this wing since we're gonna add a second wing to the to the fly if you want to make sure that, that wing stays there a drip of glue and once again i'm going to use a rooster saddle because when i tie it, the flies like this uh, all monkey style or whatever you want to call it just simple wing hackle wing I want to use a pretty sparse 
Hackle, which is the rooster saddle, which in my opinion has the best of both worlds. It has those stiff, fine fibers here, and it has those softer with more filling here. Convex, concave. Remember to put convex, the shiny side, towards you. And I'm taking, pulling the fibers off that I'm not going to use, and then I'm cutting that. This is my attachment point. Like so. Just to the side of it, or facing me. Then you take your scissors. Not the cutting part, the other 90 degree sharp edge in here. And then just slowly. It doesn't need a lot of pressure. And this is enough, because you will do the rest with your fingers. Come down, pinch, reverse your grip. When you're choosing a hackle, this is a lot of times I remember myself was difficult because either the hackle became too long or too short and the, the fly did not create a good proportion. Uh, a good guideline is to use the, uh, the saying that the, the hackle should be about a third of the total wing length in, uh, in length. So, in this case, the wing will end around here. You will see that when the fly is done. And here is also re another reason why I don't use too much flash in the wing. When you, your dubbing is brushed out like this, that's enough flash, in my opinion. The same piece of fox hair, olive gold, uh, olive banana. And this one will be a little bit, little bit thicker. Last time I tied uh, reversed when I was finishing the fly. This time I will not, because I'm actually going to add uh, jungle cock feathers to this, and I want to keep that head as small as possible. Something like this. Just put that straight on, loose, and then more pressure. There we go. Before I do any adjustments or something, I push the brush through to make sure that that turned out good, which it did. You can see it slowly, gradually gets thinner. And then you take your razor blade again and just close to that thread without cutting the thread. Believe me, I've cut my shares of thread in my life. Now you can see that this hackle is about the same a third. Goes to here, two, three. We'll create a very nice drip shape of that fly. So it's a very good, easy way to measure your hackle. This fly doesn't really need cheeks, but in my personal opinion, the only I've started to use way less of this because it is not important at all. But on some flies it does create a certain look. For example, these single color flies, in my opinion, gets a little bit prettier when you have this on. This should be about the same length as the hackle. So what I did there was I cleaning the stem, making it easier to attach it just where the, the fibers uh, are still there. I don't want to uh, attach the uh, jungle cock on just a clean stem. It's very easy for it to flip over, you might have noticed sometimes it's pretty difficult, but if you always use a little bit of the the soft uh, fiber, the, the hackle itself, or whatever you want to call it, as you can see, it gets pretty easy to attach. And it sticks where it should be. Here, I always fold these, making them last a, lot, a little bit longer. If you hit a rock or something like that, it's very easy for them to get loose. Mm, something like this. One more. Now I'm finishing shaping the head before I cut anything. Something like this. Fetch that. Cut it. You can of course cut this after you're done. Don't need to do it directly. Yeah, something like this. Then I'll take the glue. I'm 
one two three four cut and then squeeze that around so what you can do here if you want that head to be shiny of course add a few extra layers of glue or varnish or UV glue or anything like that uh, there is I've shown if you want to see how I use the UV glue you can see in that in my previous videos as well and in the future ones I will not do that this time uh, in my opinion these uh, olive color or very light colored heads uh, doesn't need that shimmer or doesn't really show in the same way so this is just quickly functional fishing fly that you can go out and start using right away you don't have to wait for any glue or varnish to uh, harden but what you want to do is cut very close here with a razor blade or if you have a super sharp scissor but I'm gonna use the razor blade and then just a tiny tiny like that Right, so this is the olive banana, then we have the Orkla gold, which is, as you can see, this shade of banana is a little bit more gold, and of course that gold will shimmer it out as a golden fly. These works beautifully in sunshine and nice, beautiful weather. Okay, stay tuned, we'll soon be up with the next episode, where we'll be tying hackle flies.